Hello from uh, Spiritual Seeds, from uh, Father Ivano. This is the second Sunday in Ordinary Time. Uh, first of all, to say that I'm very happy to do these seeds. Uh, I'm actually enjoying it, and I hope you can receive um, life from these very simple uh, videos. Just before I proclaim this Gospel, to give you a little bit of a context. Uh, we call this Sunday the second Sunday in ordinary time. What does it mean? Uh, of course, uh, our life is not ordinary, especially now. Uh, our life is always uh, special, is always something important. Uh, ordinary here at the Church simply means our real life. Uh, so this Gospel wants to find us in our real life, where you are at the moment. Maybe in bed because you are sick, or maybe, I don't know, pregnant, or maybe on a journey, wherever you are. This gospel, the gospel always meets us in our real life. The second thing to say is that you may know or you may not know that uh, the Church, the readings of the Gospel, uh, the readings at Mass, uh, they change every three years. So they follow a cycle. But for the second Sunday of ordinary time, the Church always chooses the Gospel from the Gospel according to John. And in every year, the Gospel always points to Christ as the Lamb of God. This is the context of this reading. And the lamb is not just an animal. John, the Gospel of John, is a theological gospel. It's written with a theological pen. And in the theology of John, the key, the key event is the Jewish Passover. That is, when the people of Israel sacrificed a lamb and put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost of the houses in Egypt, and in this way they were spared from death, they were saved from death, and not only, they were set free from slavery. So when John and the Church tells us, in your life, Look at the Lamb of God. That is, uh, in your life, there is this event that is Christ that enters our life as the Lamb of God, as the one who can take our sins away, who can save us from death, and who can make us life move from slavery, from addictions, from every blockage to freedom. So this is the context of this Gospel, which I am now proclaiming. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. As John stood with two of his disciples, Jesus passed, and John stared hard at him and said, Look, there is the Lamb of God. Hearing this, the two disciples followed Jesus. Jesus turned round, saw them following, and said, What do you want? They answered, Rabbi, which means teacher, where do you live? Come and see, he replied. So they went and saw where he lived, and stayed with him the rest of that day. It was about the tenth hour. One of these two who became followers of Jesus after hearing what John had said was Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter. Early next morning, Andrew met his brother and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means the Christ. And he took Simon to Jesus. Jesus looked hard at him and said, You are Simon. Son of John, you are to be called Cephas, meaning 
rock. The Gospel of the Lord. It's a very rich gospel, it's very close to my heart in particular, but I want to start from the very end, this uh, meeting with uh, Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, that is called Cephas, meaning uh, rock, in Greek, uh, Peter, eh? in Latin also, Pietra. Eh? So there is this person, that is Simon, son of John, who has a name. His name is Simon, which is a beautiful name, because it's the name of one of the twelve sons of Jacob, one of the patriarchs. So this man has a name, Simon, and as a history, is the son of John. And we know from other Gospels that he's a fisherman, that he's married, that he has a house in Capernaum, that he lives by the lake in Galilee. He has a history. And in the meeting with Christ, this man receives a new name, Peter. Now, for us who are Western European, it means uh, not a great deal, eh? because really for us now, names, words, uh, have very almost null significance. We, today we call one event with one name, and tomorrow we call it with the opposite name. Names have no meaning. Today we change not just the name of people, we change gender. We call today a man a woman, and tomorrow a woman a man. For us, names have no meaning. But for a Semitic context, for a Jewish context, where everything is real, a name is not an attribute. The name is one with the thing, with the person that has that name. That is, a name identifies the person and gives to the person an identity and a mission and a role. I mean, this is wood, and uh, I mean, here God is saying to this person, you are called Peter. So this is wood, and God says, you are water. That is, it is not a change of name, it's a change of reality, it's a change of function, it's a change of, of purpose. And this is what is happening with this man. The encounter with Christ, and this is the incredible good news. When we meet Christ, when Christ meets us, what happens in Christianity is that everything changes in our life. We receive a new orientation, we receive a new meaning, we receive a new reality. We are, by Christ, made new. Everything is made new. And this is the incredible good news. Because Peter is the church, is us. What is true for Peter is true for me and for you. But how? How will it happen? If you are married, how is your marriage becoming completely new? My priesthood, how can my priesthood, meeting with Christ, can become a new reality. The way you are at the moment, maybe you are sad, you are oppressed, you are always cynical. How can you be made new? Listen to me. Eh? It's a bit longer today, but if you are patient, uh, there are a few things I would love really to, to say. How does this new creation appear? I'll show you. There are four steps, eh? very briefly. The first step is that in this gospel there is a group of people, John the Baptist and his disciples, that stood. That is, our life begins in a position that is static. Our life is somehow in a position where we can't change things. We can't change our marriage, we can change our character, we can ch not change our sins. We are stuck. And Christianity, to be a Christian, is not something that suddenly I decide, okay, I'm going to become a Christian. 
I'm going to uh, become a, a Christian marriage. I'm going to become a holy priest. I'm going to become a, 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 a happy single mother. How does we become Christian? Because these people who are stuck, there is another person, they receive from another person an announcement, behold the Lamb of God. That is, Christianity is not my own intervention, is not my own decision, is not my goodwill or my good intention. It is to receive from outside of me an announcement of the good news, that there is a Lamb, that is Christ, passing, that is the possibility of God to enter my life and to make it new, the possibility for my life to be set free from cynicism, from sin, the possibility for my marriage to be made new, to be saved. The Lamb of God is passing and listening to this, everything moves. The two disciples followed Jesus. That is, our life moves after we have heard, and to hear is not just to hear, to hear is to understand, is to want, is to believe the good news. Once that act of faith happens, our life begins to change direction. It begins a journey of conversion, following Jesus. Then there is the second moment, is when in the journey, at one point Christ turns and begins a dialogue. The journey stops and Christ says, what do you want? These are the first words of Christ in the Gospel of John. What are you looking for? Are you looking for yourself? Are you looking for a holiness that is a theory, an idea? Are you looking for a solution to your problems? Are you looking for maybe a human satisfaction, a human compensation, consolation. What are you looking for? And it is Christ scrutinizes the heart of these people, our hearts. And they answer, Master, Rabbi, where do you live? That means uh, we want to be your disciples. This is a technical Jewish language, which means, uh, is not where do you live, means what is your postcode. In the Jewish understanding, it means we want to be part of you. We want to belong to you. We want to be associated with you. We want to be part of you. We want to be like you. And then the third part, third movement, come and see. And they went and they stayed there. It was the 10th hour, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. This is the third movement in becoming a new creation. That is, at one point, there is an external journey, and at one point there is an interior journey. To become a Christian at one point is not just to follow Christ, that is to follow the commandments, to follow morality, to come to church, to light candles, to pray, to love the neighbor. At one point, to be a disciple, to be a Christian, means to come and see and stay with Christ. These two verbs of John, to see and to remain with Christ. It is, a, it is a contemplative relationship. It is an intimate relationship. It means to become one with Christ. To be a disciple at one point is not anymore to follow another person. It is to be that person. It is to be identified with that person, to be one with that person. And then the fourth movement is when 
one of them, Andrew, comes out early next morning. This is the, this is the church that is constantly early, constantly in haste, constantly dynamic, constantly missionary, that early next morning, the first thing that he does, he goes to evangelize and he says, we have found Christ. We have found the promise of God. We have found the Passover. We have found the root of our life. We have found the source of eternal life. Come. And that's when the life of Peter changes. And your life changes, my life changes, and the world can change. We are the church. That is, we carry not, uh, we don't carry a book, we don't carry pastoral letters, we don't carry plants, we carry fresh, we carry fresh life. We carry Christ, the living Christ, the living Passover. The Lamb of God is passing, passing. is constantly fresh, constantly alive. Good. I'm very happy that this has entered your life, this good news, and I will see you next Sunday.